All right, Shalom. I like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And um, as you see before your screen, this is ROT. It says tanks in the streets. Military vehicles shot in D.C. ahead of 4th of July. All right. And this 4th of July is always a holiday that America celebrates to supposedly represents their independence. All right. From from uh, Britain. And, um, you know, I just wanted to I saw this. It was just like, wow, you know, we we, we truly live in. You know, in that time, all right, uh, Elder Sakharan, uh, he put out a beautiful video, which was, you know, make sure we stay on prophecy because the Lord is always at work. You know, it's a lot of things going on and, um, you know, but we got to stay focused. I did a lesson uh, uh, entitled, we have to abound more and more. All right. And that's just the truth. The elect. It's going to abound more and more in this work and focus on, you know, uh, uh, their mission, which which is to prophesize. All right. So let me get this scripture. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse one. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. All right. And. When you check this video out, RT News, tanks in the streets, military vehicles shot in D.C. ahead of 4th of July. So they have military tanks being stationed in the streets of Washington, D.C. before the 4th of July. What is that telling you? That anything can pop off, man. If you've been watching politics and news, you would know that. We was just about to go into World War Three, but Trump held back. All right. So that means that. You know, we're closer than we ever been. Unto the prophecy and the two last major prophecies in which we're waiting on is the force of the mark of the beast and them to declare this World War Three, because this place that you call North America is going to be destroyed by the ways of thermonuclear fire and also by the angels of the Lord. All right, because they're going to shoot fire upon this place. So it says, verse two, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travailed upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. So, yeah, when this thing do pop off, you know, it may seem like there's going to be peace and safety. But the scriptures say, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. And what is that destruction coming upon? The wicked. All right. It's coming upon the wicked. As travailed upon the woman with child, and they shall not escape. Because you're not going to escape this judgment. All right. Verse 4. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day shall overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And that's very important. You know, Elder, the Elder Apostle Sakharan, he put out a beautiful video to keep brothers focused, you know, on what? Prophecy. We have to continue to watch and be sober. There is so many things going on. All right. The Lord is purifying us. You know, trying us and to make us white. All right. We have to keep our garments. We have to stay focused upon the mission. You know, the most high sent out prophets to what prophesize. It says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep in the night. Excuse me, for they that sleep, sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet of hope. 
looking for in helmet, the hope of salvation. And that's key. The hope of salvation. Because at the end of the day, we're looking for what? That one penny. The hope of salvation. For the Most High have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So that's showing you that a man doesn't lose his reward for our salvation because he goes back to the spirit world and his flesh goes into the ground. All right. Whether you wake or sleep, whether a man died in the Lord and he's in the spirit room or a man in the flesh today. All right. Living. The scriptures say we shall live together with him. Verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. And edify one another even as you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. And that's key, man, to be at peace. Among yourselves, you know, you don't want to have, you know, demons, you know, infesting in you and you're not thinking clearly, you know, right now there's a shifting, you know, like I said, the most High is purifying us and trying us through the fire. All right. You want to esteem them very highly in love for their work sake, which is the men before you and be at peace among yourselves. So we got to be at peace among each other. All right. Verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. And that's another key thing. All right. Support the weak, the feeble minded, comfort the feeble minded, which is the men in the truth, support the weak and be patient. OK, be patient toward all men. Which being patient means to what? Suffer. Okay. It says, which is men of the Lord. It says, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever, but ever follow that which is, which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. And that's key. We have to pray. We should be praying more and more in this day. All right, because like I said, let me bring it back to the point. RT News, tanks in the streets, military vehicles shot in D.C. ahead of 4th of July. All right. Anything can pop off, man. And your America and the way that you live here is going to be changed forever. When this thing pop off, when they declare World War Three, when they force the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. This place would never be the same. Once this thing start rolling and that that and uh excuse me, it's already rolling in that direction. But once this thing pop off, this this life that you are living will never be the same. I just want to stress that because we are in them times. So it says pray without ceasing. So we so always supposed to be praying to the Lord, building upon our relationship with the Lord. It says in everything, give thanks. And that's key because we are supposed to be thankful, thankful that we were called in this truth, thankful that we was able to receive the understanding, the knowledge, you know, receive wisdom. You know, scriptures say the knowledge and wisdom shall be what the stability of thy time, you know, and everything give thanks for this is the will of the most high in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai concerning you. Quench not the spirit. You know, that's another thing, uh, you know, uh, uh, a good help was from our apostle elder Tahar. All right. He told brothers, you know, to do three shows a week. All right. And that's to keep you occupied in the, in the spirit. You know, you're not going to what? Quench the spirit. You're going to be apt to teach. You're going to be conditioned and ready and trained to go. You know, it says verse 20, despise not prophesizing. All right. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is prophecy, man. We're not supposed to despise the prophesizing because that's 
what we came, well, excuse me, that's what the Lord placed us here to do, all right? To warn, condemn, reprove, rebuke, and exhort the name of the Lord. To bid the elects to the marriage, all right? It says, verse 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray the Most High, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach be with you. Amen. All right. So I'm going to play this video and come back at it with another scripture. All right. You know, so there you go, man. You know, I'm going to bring out this scripture. I'm going to make this, try to wrap this thing up. Um, This is uh, Habakkuk chapter two. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon a tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. And that's exactly what the men of the Lord do. All right. We watch to see what the Lord say unto us. And this right here, the Lord is speaking to us. Okay. Tanks in the streets, military vehicles shot in D.C. ahead of 4th of July. If you can't see that, you know, this is speaking, then you're clearly blinded and you don't know what time you're living in. All right. It says, um. And the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Excuse me. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. All right. So like I said, man, when this thing pop off, it's not going to tarry. It's going to come, man. You know, it seems like it's tarrying. You know, it seems like it's, it's, it's getting loud. You know, things is about to start going off, but then it calms down. But as the scriptures say, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. And that vision is talking about prophecy. The vision is talking about the force of the mark of the beast. The vision is talking about. Uh, nuclear destruction, you know, the, them declaring World War Three, Jacob's trouble. All right. It says for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, 
wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. All right. So the destruction of Babylon, the great, a.k.a. North America, is on its way, man. And I got one more one more scripture for you. This is Revelation chapter 18 and 7. How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she say in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burnt with fire. For strong is the Lord Yahweh who judgeth her. So it's the Most High who's judging this place. All right. And we've been telling you over and over that this place, when what you call uh, a North America, is going to be destroyed by the way of thermonuclear fire and also fire from the angels of the Lord. All right. You know, this place is destined. All right. For destruction. So verse eight, therefore, shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire. For strong is the Lord Yahweh who judgeth her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lamb it for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. All right, because you know what? Let me continue. Verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying at last, at last, that great city, Babylon, that great, that mighty city. For in one hour is thou judgment come. All right. So in one hour, this place is going to go out, man. It took these devils, you know, they put us in slavery and, and had us build up this, this, uh, this, this, this place for what? 400 years, five, you know, going on a certain amount of years. And now what? In one hour is going to be wiped out, man. So it says in one hour is thou judgment come. Verse 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buy of her merchandise anymore. And everyone knows that this place, uh, America, is a cash cow for these other countries, you know, these other nations. They come over here and they milk this place and they send their money back home to their people, to their families, you know, to take care of them. So it says the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buy of their merchandise anymore the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and of fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all tiny wood and all my man manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and of iron and marble right so you know there you go man all right this place ultimately is going to be destroyed man and um just got to stress the point all t news tanks in the streets Military vehicles shot in D.C. ahead of 4th of July. All right. So this shit is going on, man. So ain't no telling anything could pop off. So, you know, brothers, I hope you was edified by this. Uh, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash. I like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hope for elect. Shalom.